only those who take care of the evening with Jesus can really enjoy the morning. Before I Sleep is an evening devotional that draws you spiritually to God. Before I Sleep evening devotional helps you enjoy a sound sleep and receive comfort to your precious soul. Helps you enjoy angelic protection while sleeping. Equips you for the next day's exploits. Enhances your understanding of God's plan for your life, your spiritual growth, development and so much more grace for the future. Before I Sleep evening devotional will help motivate students into excelling in life help you settle marital and other issues remember Jesus is not through with you book an appointment tonight with Jesus for tomorrow with before I sleep an evening devotional guide to establish sustain and strengthen your relationship with God by the family pastor Reverend JB Etan. the Lord. I count it a great privilege once again to come your way. Today is very, very exciting and something very critical that the Lord will want us to share as we will go through the scripture on the issue of becoming one flesh. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the way you have been leading us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your mercy. Father, we do not deserve the attention you've given unto us in this school of holy matrimony. We do not deserve the kind of care, the kind of sacrifice that you have made in order for our relationship to work. But Father, once again, as we have come unto you, we will seek that your Holy Spirit will continue to dwell in us, to teach us and to direct us aright in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this day. Do for us more than what we ask. For we pray in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, by the special grace of God, we shall be looking into becoming one flesh part two. Last time when we had an opportunity to share with you on the becoming one flesh, which is from the book of Genesis, we were able to establish the point that becoming one flesh is not a day's activity. It's not an instant thing. Even when we enter into marriage and then we are married, and even though people have been married for about 10 years and uh, 20 years or 30 years, the becoming one flesh is a process that does not end until the day where you depart from this planet Earth. So it's not something where somebody was saying, I have outlived this teaching or I've passed this level. Of course, you know, one of the things I like to remind you is that why marriage certificate is being given to couples on the day of their marriage is because there's no graduation. There's no time where you say that you are finished. So marriage certificate is given to you in trust that you will live to fulfill your commitment and you will take the responsibility very seriously. And so one of the things I like to share with you, which is a basic cost in the marriage relationship, is this process of becoming one flesh. And it is a thing that we cannot finish in one day. We cannot finish in five years. We cannot finish in 10 years. So when the Bible now tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 23 and 24, which I like to read before we can reestablish the, the topic that the Lord has given unto us, it says, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now, this becoming is what we want to deal with very strongly today. And last time when we talked about becoming one flesh, we're yet to show you different areas of becoming one flesh. And the first one I like to establish is as we go into the book of Proverbs chapter 20, 
Proverbs chapter 20, we shall be reading verse 27. Of course, you know, in the book of Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, the Lord himself tells us expressly about the nitty gritty that we, we need to address before we can talk about the becoming. And in chapter 20, verse 27, the Bible says, The spirit of a man is the lamb of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. The spirit of a man is the lamb of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Now, the becoming number one aspect I want us to look at is that when the spirit of a man cannot be assessed, it therefore means you are in trouble. The spirit of a man, the Bible says, is the lamb of the Lord. It is what the Lord uses to check the man, to cross-check and to confirm who the man is. And for you to become one flesh, you must be able to assess the spirit of your spouse. Now, certain people have married the body. They may marry the boat, but the spirit needs to be joined together. And in fact, concerning the spirit, the Bible tells us in the book of First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, and I like us to listen to it. He said, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, when you cannot arrest the spirit of your spouse, it therefore means whatever you are arresting, whatever you are holding, whatever you are possessing, you are possessing something that is not tenable. The spirit of a man makes him to flow with you when you have access into the spirit. And so becoming one flesh means that you are bone to bone, flesh to flesh, and your spirit have a flow whereby you can understand what he's saying, where he's going, how he is thinking, and how he is reasoning. Several people are married, but yet they do not have the access to the spirit of the man. And several people have a control from certain spirit that you don't have knowledge of. And of course, you know that the spirit can be taking him another way while you are thinking another way. So one of the critical ways of becoming one flesh is to have access to the spirit that is in control of your spouse. Now, as we look at the spirit now, there is something else that we need to carefully look into before we go into the book of Ruth, which will tell us about how this woman was able to express herself in such a way that you can now say this is now the bone of my bone this one did not just come to be a gold digger of course you know in many relationships many people may come to you with all kind of fantasy with all kind of promises because of the benefit which they are going to get from the relationship but i like us to go to the book of ephesians chapter 5 when we go to ephesians chapter 5 we'll be reading from verse 25 and giving some explanation of what the Lord will want us to look into in terms of becoming one flesh. Now, in Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wife just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So love now comes in into becoming one flesh that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. The washing, which means the understanding that the becoming one flesh is not perfect people meeting perfect person, but that there's going to be some cleansing. Cleansing has to be with understanding. It would have to be with some undertaking that you're going to undertake to do certain things because you know that husband and wife, you are going on a journey. 
a journey that will not end until you meet with Christ. Remember, we did define marriage as discovery of the lost rib and joining them together to advance the kingdom of God. So now when it says by the cleansing, you know, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the blood. The becoming together of one flesh. You know, sometimes when your wife is thinking differently and you are thinking differently, you know, you don't have a spiritual understanding of how, you know, you can flow together. It becomes an issue in marriage. So, when we talk about the spiritual becoming together, the spirit, if it is not together, you cannot flow. In fact, the becoming is an impossible matter when the spirit cannot be assessed. So, assessing the spirit, you know, of your wife, assessing the spirit of your husband, I can use the word now spouse to cover both of you, is the most critical aspect of it. That is how you see when people get married, they think alike after a while because the spiritual flow is there. The foundation have been laid in Christ. Both of them are believers. And then there's a spiritual assessing this one. And for that's why when something happened to the wife, and the husband is somewhere, his spirit will be disturbed because in the spiritual realm, there's, there's no distance. You will know that your wife is affected. Your wife is in pain. You are feeling it. Your husband is in pain. The wife is feeling it because of what? There's a spiritual flow. And so you can never become one flesh when there's no flow in the spiritual realm. Now, as you go to the book of Ephesians now, the Bible says in verse 27 that he might present her to himself a glorious church and not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Now, let's leave that one aside. So, husband ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. Now, to become one flesh, you have to be passing through a process of nourishing before cherishing. So those are the kind of sharpening yourself in the right direction to be of help to one another. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. Now, when the Bible is talking about being members of, it talks about having several things in common. And it says, finally, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now, if you check the whole of Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 25, before we can get to that verse 31, there are so many things that the, the scripture mentions which is the preamble to the becoming of one flesh. And now in verse 31, it said, for this reason. What is the reason? The reason of becoming one flesh have so many things which we need to consider. Now, if we go to the book of Ruth, which I want us to zero down, we can now have a little explanation of what it means to become one flesh. Ruth chapter 1, let's read together from verse 15. And she said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me. And more also, if anything be dead, but you and me. Hi! When I listened to this, I said, I wish every couple would understand what it means to become one flesh. Now, what was she saying here? He said, let nothing push me and treat me not 
no matter how you push me, I will not go because I have entered into a covenant of becoming one flesh. And in this covenant of becoming one flesh, there are many things that we need to look at, which is very, very critical. And it looks as certain things that have made people to consider divorce. The first one I want you to look at is said, wherever you go, I will go. Which is talking about the journey. We talk about no matter where you journey to, I am willing to pass through the pain. I'm willing to pass through the crucibles. I'm willing to pass through everything where you are passing through for the sake of becoming one together with you. And he said again, where you lodge, I will lodge. Lodge now talk about a temporal setback. So if you lodge in an open space, I will lodge with you. If you lodge in a place that is not comfortable, I will lodge with you. So this was not a marriage of convenience. Don't forget, marriage is for better and for worse. And so he now said again another thing, your people shall be my people, which means tribal sentiment will not separate us in this journey of together, this journey of becoming, you know, becoming one flesh cannot be frustrated by background of where I come from. So when we talk about marriage here, we are talking about a relationship where your background has nothing to do with where you are going to. He said, your people shall be my people. In short, I will eat your food. I would learn your culture. I would make a lot of changes that would help me to be able to do what adjustment that would help me to be able to continue to go with you to where you are going to. This is what he said. Your people would be my people. And then there is something here that breaks my heart. And your God, my God. This is a woman who had a different God altogether, but was willing to change denomination, was willing to change faith for the sake of marriage. I want you to understand, sir and madam, that the journey of becoming one place is very critical. And like I said, it is the basic thing that will help you to enjoy your marriage relationship. Now hear what he said, where you die, I will die, which means the covenant he has made, matrimonial covenant is such a serious one. You know, I promise you that when we come again, we'll be talking about, I hate divorce. Before we can understand how God and why God said, I hate divorce, and know how much God hate divorce, we must know the pain we pass through to become one flesh. It's not as easy as anybody could just look at the fantasy part of it, uh, thinking that we're going to lick mouth, we're going to embrace, we're going to have sex, we're going to have this. No. It is a very serious matter. That is why it pains me when I hear people handling matrimonial issues as if it is just the flesh alone. As if he did not talk about bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh and saying she shall be called woman. Now let's round it up this way. He says now, and there will I be buried. So it doesn't matter how he's going to die, how she's going to die. He said, you will bury me. Love is very strong, you know what the Bible says. So, but the adjustment is what several people are not willing to adjust. They keep talking about their people. They keep talking about their people. And in fact, there are two instances of people talking about their people that is very, very painful. Remember the case of Samson. When she was trying to, you know, lure Samson into that premature death. She said, you don't love me. You only love your people. And Samson too, when he was speaking, he was speaking about his own people, which means they have not become one flesh. If they become one flesh, the pain of Samson, even the death of Samson would have so much pain her. She would not have deceived Samson to release the secret only in order for him to be killed. 
My prayer for you as I pray is that you will not fall a victim of Samson because of what you claim to be blind love. But this you can only solve if both of you are sincerely becoming one flesh. Don't forget the last verse of becoming one flesh say that and both of them were naked, which means you cannot become one flesh except you are open to one another. But don't forget also that the spirit of a man searches. is the lamp of God which searches all the parts of the body. So the spirit is like a light that shines. And when you cannot make use of light, how can you enjoy a marriage relationship? Finally, he says, the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything be dead, part you and me. This is a very critical decision that Ruth took. And of course, you know, the entire book was named after her, basically because of this resolution. The Bible says in verse 18 of Ruth chapter 1, when she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. So, Becoming one flesh is a determination. It's a journey that you have resolved that come what may, you are going together. And that is what keeps people in marriage relationship. You don't allow the things you have access onto. You don't allow the things that you have seen. You don't allow the things that you have heard. You don't allow the things that you have encountered to make you to say, ah, from today, we are no longer going to be together. Ah, I'm suffering. I'm passing through this. I did not bargain for this. I did not even agree for this. Then you are not willing to marry because getting married has another process of becoming one flesh. It is after becoming one flesh that we will now be talking about what the Lord says, I hate divorce. We'll be going into that as we come again until I come your way again. I'd like you to know that it is the plan of God that we become one flesh, husband and wife, and grow together. The Lord will bless you as you continue to join us in this school of holy matrimony where God himself is opening new chapters of our life and making us to enjoy the full benefit of being joined together in holy matrimony. Until I come your way again, I remain your friend and your family pastor. My name is Joseph Eton. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the way you have been leading us to this process of becoming one flesh. I pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to rest upon us. The light of God will shine on our path. And Father, that as we have this understanding, we will do an undertaking that will lead us forward. Father, we pray that the marriage that we are talking about, our own marriage in particular, shall be the ideal marriage. That because of us, several people will desire to be married. Thank you, Father. Do for us, O God, much more than what I pray. For I pray in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.